Hi everyone, welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. The Color Your Season promotional products end on August 31st, and I couldn't resist sharing one more card with you. This one is a lot simpler and it uses a Christmas theme. I'm gonna do some heat embossing. I'm gonna give you some tips about these watercolor pencils on colored cardstock as well. Make sure that you stick with me to the end of the video because I'll be sharing some additional samples with you using this exact same bundle of products. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. Here's a close up of the card we're gonna be creating today. Really quite simple. Definitely one you can make bunches of. We're gonna start with a piece of Whisper White cardstock. I'm gonna go ahead and fold that in half. If you're here visiting from YouTube, you'll find a link down in the description bar below, which will navigate you over to the pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies for today's card. I've also cut a piece of crumb cake cardstock, and this is where we're gonna be doing our stamping. So I've got my memento ink here, and I've mounted the image of the holly. This is from a promotional product only available in August with Stampin' Up. It's called the Color Your Seasons Promotion, and it centers around three products. There's the Blended Seasons Stamp Set. You can see it's a very large two-piece stamp set. It does come in either clear mount, that's what this is, or wood mount. I love it because it's gonna help you create cards all year long, with both greetings for the outside during all occasion cards clear through the holidays. Also available are coordinating framelits called the Stitched Seasons. One of the reasons I absolutely love these are these nested stitched labels that are all part of this framelits die. And there's also a brand new set of watercolor pencils. This is called the Watercolor Pencils Assortment 2. There are colors in here that are not part of the original assortment in the annual catalog. I've mounted just the holly and I've got my memento ink. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink up my image. And I'm gonna stamp that here near the lower third of my card. Lots of firm, even pressure, and I'm careful to trace out the design since it's rather detailed. We're gonna color those holly leaves in using the watercolor pencils. The one great thing about watercolor pencils is if you don't want to use a watercolor brush or a blender pen or an aqua painter to spread the color, you can use them as colored pencils. The lead is very soft, making them easy to use. So these two pencils came from the new assortment. These products are only available through August 31st. If they sell out before then, they will not be available. I'm gonna start with the Granny Apple Grain Pencil, and I'm just gonna actually add color inside all of these holly leaves. Now I've taken the Garden Green Pencil, I'm gonna add some definitions up the center. I'm not worried about um, doing too much shading or blending because I think the pencil itself is gonna lend some credence to some additional colors. So I'm working on either side of the vein in the center of the leaves. Now this in itself is very pretty, but I also want to show you if you want to use a blender pen to spread the color. Blender pens come in a three pack and they are dual ended and it doesn't matter which end you use, they're identical. There's a chemical in the barrel of the pen that moistens the tips that turns this into a blending tool. They do get stained from the pigmentation of the ink and the color. Just make sure that it's cleaned off from your previous use. You can see that I'm rolling it here on my paper. But I wanna give you an idea of how to spread the color if that's what you choose to do. So I'm gonna use this very much like a paintbrush and I'm just gonna pull the color out from the center. What it'll do, it'll smooth out all those pencil lines for you as well and give you a more subtle image. To clean the blender pen, you're gonna hold it horizontally on your work surface and you're gonna roll and scroll it so that all the color comes off. It's important to turn the blender pen so that you don't miss an area and you don't wanna transfer that color to another area of your project or to another card. You can also pick up additional color from here. So let's just say I wanted to add a little bit darker area of green. I can do that by picking it up right from the pencil as well. I do recommend that you clean your blender pen before you put it away. That's just a good practice so that when you go to pull it out next time, it's clean and ready to go. And then once it runs clear, all you have to do is cap it. You do need to store it horizontally so that the chemical in the pen barrel doesn't just gravitate to one end. My next step is going to heat emboss the greeting in white to coordinate with the cardstock background and the ribbon I'm going to add. You can use Versamark ink 
as you would with all your heat embossing, but I like to use the Whisper White. And the reason is, is if I miss an area with powder, it's gonna be a little bit less noticeable. I've got my coffee filter here to help catch my excess embossing powder, and I'm just going ahead and getting this ready. The words Merry Christmas come from the exact same stamp set, so I'm gonna go ahead and ink those up. And I'm gonna stamp those just above my holly. I'm gonna bring in my embossing powder and I'm gonna cover that generously. I wanna make sure I don't miss anything. I'm gonna dump it in the coffee filter because I'm able to put that right back inside the bottle. I'm gonna set that aside. Let me show you how this works. Really simple with a coffee filter so that there is no waste. This is also a great tip when you're stamping with friends. And I've got my heat tool here. I'm gonna go ahead and use it on speed two. And this is gonna set the powder. The powder is gonna go from a powdery finish to more of an enamel finish, creating a beautiful raised greeting. Once that's finished, I'm gonna flip that over. I'm gonna add adhesive generously around the circumference of my card layer. The reason is, is that the heat tool will warp the cardstock just a little bit. So I wanna make sure that it's gonna rest nice and even on my card base when I go to mail it. That's gonna go here, leaving a small margin of white around the border. And I'll flip it upside down and rub from the back, just in case I have any residual color on my hands. It won't transfer to the front of my project. I've also cut myself a piece of the beautiful Whisper White Classic Weave Ribbon. I love this because the weave is more casual and it goes really well with that crumb cake cardstock. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wrap this around here. I'm gonna make my bow off to the far right side I'm going to put my finger here, and then I'm going to go ahead and create that bow. And then I'm going to pull it tautly. If your loops are uneven like mine, go ahead and put your finger on the knot, and then just slightly pull the opposite raw end. And that's going to help adjust them so that you can get them more even to the size that you want. And then once you've got them where you want them, go ahead and take your scissors and give your raw ends a little bit of a haircut. Stick with me to the end of the video. I've got some other completed samples using this exact same bundle of products to share with you. I'm going to add these beautiful red rhinestones. That's gonna take the place of the berries that are inside my holly. So I'm gonna go ahead and place one of these inside each one of those openings. You know, I just realized I didn't color these in. Let's go ahead and make those light green. And I'm not even gonna blend these with my blender pen simply because those areas are so small. And there we have it, a really a simple Christmas card. Now I promised you I have other samples for you. Some of these have been videos here on YouTube. The rest have been over on my blog. This one uses just a portion of that large flower image on the stamp set. All the greetings are from this exact same set as well. This one's a little bit more fussy, creating a double frame. And I colored with the colored pencils just inside that area and a beautiful vellum greeting. This was also a video. And this one creates a beautiful glossy brayered background with that glimmered leaf. Again, all from that same bundle. This smaller card has the wheat, again, with the colored pencils. And finally, this one, a little bit more fussy. I did hand cut these hollies. There is not a die for that particular image, but I did use the die pieces here for the sprigs in the background. Again, you see I featured those beautiful red rhinestones. This bow is part of the die. Remember, these products are only available while supplies last through August 31st. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in Stampin' Up! products, I would be more than happy to send you a complimentary copy of the annual catalog. Just leave me a comment below. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. 